There is something magical about being on a lake, especially when you're in the north of Italy on Lake Iseo, dotted with picturesque villages along the shore, some like this one on an island in the middle of the lake. You can easily get around by boat, which lead out from the beautiful town of Iseo, located right along the shore with a marina, piazzas, little lanes, and shops and restaurants. Lake Iseo is not as well known or as busy as the other lakes up here in the Italian Lake District, like its famous neighbors of Lake Maggiore, Lugano, Como, and Lake Garda. You can reach Iseo conveniently by train, such as from the nearby city of Brescia, just 25 minutes away, that costs less than five euro, and you will enjoy some beautiful scenery along that short ride with a train station located right in town, just to about a 300 meter walk down to the waterfront, starting out by crossing right over the tracks. Notice I've arrived early at 8.30, which was easy to do because I've been staying in Brescia for a few days. And this early start is very helpful in beating the crowds that show up later in the day especially for getting on the excursion boat. I'm so early the ticket office has not even opened yet. By midday, as you'll see later, there is a long line here waiting to buy their tickets. With that early start, there's time for a stroll around Iseo town. It's not a big place, maybe 500 meters wide at most, but in that typical Italian style of a lakefront village, it is beautiful with its central piazza surrounded by porticos and sidewalk restaurants. Bicycling is a popular sport here because it's a terrific way to get around and see the region, with bike routes along the shore and up in the hills. This Piazza Garibaldi in the center of the town features a statue of that great hero of Italian unification, Giuseppe Garibaldi. Many Italian towns have a statue of Garibaldi, but this was the first one. Unlike in most other places, here he is not sitting on a horse, but standing, facing the city hall. The bicyclists have had their little break in the piazza, and now it's time to move along on the ride. You would also find the piazza a good place for a snack, maybe just a cornetto in the morning, or sit down at a table for some waiter service. Mostly in the morning, people are just having coffee and a roll. Then later in the afternoon, it's time for some drinks, either a glass of wine or that favorite, the spritz. Of course, dogs are always welcome at the table and seem happy to be here. Some shops are still opening as it's still early in the day and the back streets are rather quiet. It's a nice place to go take a walk behind the piazza where you'll soon find Piazza Mazzini, a smaller plaza with an outdoor wash basin. Still functioning, it's an unusual survival of a tradition that had been widespread, especially important in old days when many homes had no running water. As you wander through these narrow cobblestone streets, you'll be immersed in old world charm. Then be surprised by a whimsical gathering of colorful umbrellas hanging above. We'll see more of those charming back lanes later, but now it's time to get to the waterfront enjoying more scenes of that picturesque marina, purchase a ticket for the boat ride. Fortunately, at this hour, it's not very busy, so it's easy to get that ticket, then wait online for a few minutes and get on board for the main adventure of the day, a cruise on the lake, and then a visit to a little hamlet on the island in the middle of the lake. Casting off and away we go. Lake Iseo is located in the Lombardy region of northern Italy and it's surrounded by numerous charming towns and villages. There are 16 coastal municipalities of the lake with another seven hillside municipalities. The lake is 25 kilometers long with a maximum width of five kilometers, making it much smaller than its more famous neighbors such as Lake Como, Maggiore, and Lake Garda. That smaller size of the lake gives it a special charm where you feel like you can see the entire lake at once, embraced by the mountains all around you. And yet the island in the middle, Monte Isola, 
is the largest lake island in all of southern and central Europe, dwarfed only by some larger lake islands in Scandinavia. One of the first stops is at Sensole, a small hamlet on the island of Monte Isola, and then the boat continues around, making numerous other stops. You can take a boat cruise along the entire length of the lake, where there are as many as 23 different places that the boat will stop, which could take about three hours cruising from one end of the lake to the other. However, on this cruise, we're just going from Iseo town to the island of Monte Isola, and then to the western shore, and then back to the island, then back to Iseo. Here is the main destination for the boat ride, the little hamlet of Pachera Moralio on the island of Monte Isola, where most people are getting off. However, the boat is going to go around the island and make a few more stops, and then it will come back here. So that's where I'll be getting off because I want to see the entire little circuit the boat can make in this part of the lake. We'll get back to that cute little port of Pachera shortly then get off the boat and have a walk around. But for now, we continue on our voyage. Looking back at that island of Monte Isola, which has a mountain 1,300 feet high. Making a stop now at Solzano, which is on the east shore of the mainland. And it's a place that you could get to by train. And then it would only take you five minutes by boat to reach the island because it is much closer than the town of Iseo to the island. So you can take a long boat ride on the lake from one end to the other in three hours or ride only five minutes from Solzano to the island, a distance of only 600 meters. These pastel colored buildings along the shores of the island and the mainland are so attractive and so Italian looking that it really feels like we're along the shores of the Mediterranean rather than up here in Northern Italy. Then we come in for another stop on the mainland with just a few people getting on, probably locals, because not only is this a ferry boat for tourist excursions, but it's a basic way that locals get out to the island. After all, there are no bridges that go out to the island, so they take the ferry. Now this next stop is back on the island at the small hamlet of Carzano. Not a very hot tourist destination, so again, only a few people getting on or off. The boat continues along this relatively narrow and yet picturesque passage, then continues around the island to the northwest end, arriving at Siviano, which is the island's largest village an attractive place, but not as picturesque as Peschiera that we'll get back to shortly. The ferry continues to the other side of the lake along the west shore, which has a major stop and a larger town with a lot of people getting on. This town of Tavernola has a lakeside promenade, old clock tower, Romanesque church, and other attractions. Continuing along, we pass a couple of small private islands, including Isola di Loreto with its own little castle in neo-Gothic style. We've been making the complete circuit around the island of Monte Isola, and you can see how it's attractive to stay on board the boat rather than getting off at that first stop back at Peschera. And there's no extra charge for staying on the boat if you've got the time. So enjoy the scenery, and then we arrive at Peschiera, which is the main attraction, perhaps, of the entire visit to Iseo, with its delightfully picturesque waterfront promenade lined with boats on one side and little cafes on the other. It's a quiet place with no private cars allowed, but watch out for the mopeds that locals are allowed to drive. Perhaps a bicycle is more your speed, and you can rent one here for an hour or the whole day if you really want to explore the island, which does have small roads that go around it and up into the hill. Most visitors are happy just to walk along the shores of this quaint village for an hour or two and maybe have a meal, have a drink, then catch the ferry back to that main town of Iseo. The ferries leave about every 20 minutes, so you don't have to worry too much about getting to the dock at a certain time. Just go there and wait and a boat will show up. 
there's a tourist information office in the village where you can get some free maps and brochures and they can help you find accommodations if you want to spend the night. There are several small hotels here and guest houses. On the map you see Peshera's location at the southern end of the island, which is three kilometers long and has several small roads. There are still some fishermen based in this little village of Peshera, whose name means fish pond, with several different varieties of fresh lake fish available in some of the restaurants. They even have a display of how they dry the fish, but those are just little wooden models. It's almost time for us to depart this heavenly island, but first you will be tempted to sit at a garden terrace and have a drink or perhaps a gourmet meal in a picture-perfect setting in the gardens of Castello Oldo Freddi. It's a deluxe hotel, and you don't have to be a guest to enjoy this delightful terrace restaurant with a casual snack bar. It's located adjacent to the ferry docks, so you can keep your eyes on the water and time your last sip of your drink so that you get over to the dock just in time to get on the boat. You'll notice there are quite a few passengers on board, but it's not overly crowded. There are seats for everybody, partly because we're here late in the season. This visit took place on the last Sunday of October, which is perfect timing because the area is not so crowded as during the summer. Stopping again at Sensole, and the weather, as you can see, is just delightful. The lakes of Lombardy have a particularly mild climate, so coming in the off season is ideal. We are completing our journey around this part of the lake and coming back to our home base of the town of Iseo, where we see that perfect waterfront promenade with no cars allowed in that peaceful area. As we get off, you'll notice the boat dock is a lot more crowded than what we saw this morning upon boarding. We are now at midday on a Sunday and rush hour has begun. It's not that much of a crush. After all, it's the end of October. If you want to come in the summertime, it's going to be a lot more busy. So perhaps plan your schedule so that you come during a weekday rather than on the weekend then be patient while waiting online. But we are done with all that and ready to get back into Iseo town for some explorations. From the boat dock, we are on a lovely waterfront plaza, then return to Piazza Garibaldi and have a walk in the little back lanes. Iseo offers a captivating escape for travelers seeking a taste of authentic Italy often overshadowed by its more well-known cousins, Lake Como and Lake Garda, Iseo hides a charm all its own with a serene atmosphere. With spritz, you get snack, typical of most of the delightful cafes of Italy. With that free meal, you might not have to spend time and money for lunch. Instead of sitting for a big meal, take a little walk in the charming back lanes of Iseo, where you might run into the neighborhood cats who will come out and greet you. Not just one, but two cats. So friendly. We'll see them again at the end. Capital of the lake, Iseo is a lively commercial and touristic town with numerous restaurants, elegant shops, and various opportunities for entertainment but has kept the ancient medieval village layout with its characteristic structure of alleys and tower houses and dramatic brick arches tunneling under buildings connecting the various lanes. Vicolo Portelli is one of the main side streets branching off from Piazza Garibaldi, which is just around the corner where you will be surrounded by restaurants. A handwritten menu in Italian on a blackboard out front and a wall of books in the aisle as you enter is a sure sign this is going to be a nice place to have a bite or a spritz that will be served with a snack. We are in a literary paradise, the Café Letterario Aden, a community gathering place for locals where visitors are also welcome. 
and can sit outdoors under the portico or out in the piazza. When you walk around the bend on the edge of the piazza to Via Moralte, you'll come upon a beautiful small church, Chiesa di Santa Maria del Mercato, so called because it's next to the market square. Built in the 14th century with Gothic and Renaissance elements and frescoes, altars, and decorative details inside. Back out on the piazza, we're having our final looks at this beautiful town center. It's really been a rewarding visit with the town, the promenades, the boat ride, and the island in the middle of the lake. And now we've got a pack of friendly little dogs on leashes, taking a stroll with the mistress and greeting their friends who work at the piazza. Remember, we've got more of those cats to show you in a little while, but first we're going to make that short walk back to the station and take another train ride. This time we'll be heading north from the town of Iseo, riding along the lake to enjoy the beautiful scenery and get a little lost. There's something special about riding along on a train on the shores of a lake with greenery in the foreground, mountains in the back, and the tranquil water in the middle, sometimes with an olive grove on the hillsides. Occasionally, your view is blocked by the homes built right up to the water's edge or the train deviates inland for a while, but then like magic, the lake reappears. My plan was to ride along the lake for about half an hour, enjoying more of this glorious scenery, and then get off at the little village of Pisonier and see what that has to offer. The marina is a sure sign that we have arrived at Pisogne, and then the people start getting up and gathering their things, and everybody's getting off the train, which should be a little warning that you should get off too. Join the crowd exiting the train. But I was enjoying the ride so much I stayed on board, hoping to see more scenery. Unfortunately, there was no more lake, and I had a little glimpse of some fields and hills, and then ended up at the little village of Darfo. From the looks of it, this is not a tourist destination, especially on a Sunday when most of the shops are closed. So it's catch the next train heading back south, but running out of time to see Pisogne, which is a cute little town with a waterfront for recreation and narrow pedestrian lanes but I didn't get off because I'm running short on time, needing to get back to the town of Brescia where I'm staying. So all I got is a few pictures from the tourist information website. Iseo caters to all types of adventures, hike or bike along well-maintained trails that hug the shoreline, taking in the ever-changing scenery, rent a motorcycle or kayak or paddleboard to explore the lake from a different perspective. For a touch of adrenaline, Try windsurfing or kite surfing. Earlier, I promised we'd end up with a few more scenes of those cute cats photographed back in the center of Iseo town. Whenever you see free-ranging cats roaming around in the streets, you know that you are in a quiet and peaceful, safe place, friendly to cats and visitors. I have many more videos about the lakes, the towns, the cities of northern Italy. Look for them in the collection, including Bologna, Verona, Sirmione, Lake Garda, Bellagio on Lake Como, Bergamo, Sestri Levante, Savona, Mantua, with an endless supply of new videos coming up in the future about Italy and the rest of Europe. We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.